exhibition here at the Haunt Museum. It's a collaboration between the Haunt Museum and the Irish Costume Archive Project. Normally housed in the Ardmore studio in Bray County Wicklow, we're very lucky here at the museum to have 30 costume from Irish film and TV series on display. All of the costume on display here at the museum have an Irish connection. It may be that the designer was Irish, or the actor was Irish, or indeed that the film was actually filmed here in Ireland. And now maybe we will have a look at some of the costume on display. On my right, we have the hat worn by John Wayne for the marriage scene in the film, The Quiet Man. This was filmed in the west of Ireland, as many of our viewers, I'm sure, will remember. On my left is a copy of the costume worn by Helen Mirren, who played the part of Queen Elizabeth II in the scene of the Queen returning from Scotland to Buckingham Palace the day before the funeral of Princess Diana. And moving on, this lovely Chanel suit from the film Greta. The story goes that Chanel were asked if they could supply the suit for the film, but they wanted three. Chanel asked for the script and this was sent on to them and they obligingly sent the three suits. One, you see, needed to be bloodied for the scene in the restaurant that the actress was going to need the suit for. Karl Lagerfeld actually has the suit which was bloodied for the film in his collection. Also the wallet is a Chanel design. Here we have three wonderful knitwear designs with collaboration between the Limerick School of Art and Design and local knitwear experts. The designs were for the first production from Limerick Toy Studio, The Night Flyer. <music> to finish my tour, the Tudors and the wonderful Henry VIII. Costumes designed by, again, Joan Bergen. Henry VIII, many of you will know, and his various wives. This is the costume for the wedding scene for his marriage to his third wife, Lady Jane. Absolutely exquisite work by Joan Bergen. Jonathan, of course, who played the part of King Henry, a cork man. The beautiful embroidery, which of course on the actual costumes back in the 16th century would have been gold thread. And so this is the end of my tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. And my colleague Margaret will now take you on a tour of some more of the costume in the exhibition. Hello, my name is Margaret Walsh and I'm a docent with the Hunt Museum and today I'd like to introduce you to some of the costumes worn by some of the films made in, in Ireland. This one is called the Rhythm Section and Blake Lively plays the part of Patrick, Stephanie Patrick, a trained assassin turned from a uh, junkie prostitute. When she learns that the plane crashed that killed her family, she turns from prostitute junkie to assassin to revenge her family. She meets up with the character Jude Law and he's Boyd and he is a trained mentor and he trains her in the gritty street fighting mode and the costume depicts that. Nothing is left to chance in the costume. 
She is to move seamlessly between the scenes and become anonymous and become one with her character, while she gets the training from Boyd, who with his anonymous costume as well, can move seamlessly in and out of different characters and different places. So that's the rhythm section. This is the film room and it is told, it's told from the story of the little boy Jack and it had to have an anonymous quality about it and it had to have an interactiveness and a playfulness between Jack and his mother which belied the horrific story. It's a creepy story about them being confined in the room 10 by 10. The film is told in sequence to help the young actor Jack to follow the storyline and to stay in character. Brie Larson and Jacob Thomberley, who plays Jack, got into their clothes, the costume, every day filmed to help them to develop the character. Part of the character stays with the costume when it, its film is finished. And in contrast to this movie here, in Bruges, Colin Farrell, he has a complete uh, a, a set of outfits of the same kind because the film is not shot in sequence. The death scene would be filmed before some of the street scenes. For this to happen, the costumes are distressed and a great deal of technical uh, input is going to do that. They're sanded, they're, they're dyed to make them look authentic. So the sequence of the first film, which is Rome, which is done in sequence to help Jack, is completely different to Bruges, where numerous costumes of the same type are made in different distressed forms to help accommodate the story. between costume and fashion is the costume as character and for this film My Left Foot with Daniel Day-Lewis and Brenda Fricker, Joan Bergen had to kind of nearly beg, borrow or steal. She was on a very tight budget. She made numerous trips to Portobello in London and brought back plastic bags full of design at the time. Now the design that Brenda Fricker and this one that Ruth Cave wore in the final scene in My Left Foot they're kind of like the Sunday best, your best outfit that you kept for going to any occasion. And Joan Bergman got inspiration for the Ruth McCabe one. It was her mother's and it was very typical of the Sunday best, the best suit that was kept for occasions. This red dress here was worn by Fiona Shaw and in the, the tight budget and the tight timeline, it was never really finished but it looked very well on Fiona Shaw. These costumes are from the film The Favourite. Sandy Powell made every one of the costumes from scratch, which was a monumental feat. She was already working with the film Mary Poppins. So it had a very limited budget. She used her ingenuity and bought cheap cotton, relatively cheap cotton, because the film was going to be filmed in pale daylight and in candlelight. And the sheen and the cotton would reflect that without taking from the scene. She used laser cut vinyl to add accessories to the costume. The black and white portrays the power playing court like a game of chess, which inspiration came from the tiles on the floor. The characters look like moving on a chessboard. The silver and the gold were added to the costumes to give a cohesive look. The actresses wore very little makeup and the complex characters and the dynamic between the three of them led to very much a power play. White is the dominant colour for wealth in the movie. It starts with Abigail wearing black and she generally gets more into the favour of the Queen wears more white. These three women played very complex characters and the clothes speak for themselves. This costume was worn by the character Rose in Ripper Street. It is in complete contrast to the life she had before. She worked as a brothel for a character called Long Susan. This costume gave her the stability and the conservatism she desired. And the subtle palette portrays a more mannered and a more structured and a more fitting into the society which she aspired to do.
These costumes are designed for the Viking TV series, and they were designed by Joan Bergen, Emmy Award winning costume designer. She used authentic methods to create the effect you have. She used plants and berries and used the construction used as the would be at the time. The disguise that had the machine stitching by hand stitching over the seams and did extensive decoration to the leather and adding the metal to make the costumes have the visual effect which they have. Vikings were a highly cultured democratic society which gave equal power to women. They ruled and fought on the back of feet beside their husbands. This red costume here is called the feminine maiden look. And you have the leather tunic here and this gorgeous, glorious 4K, which gave a great revival to the craftsmanship. This is what Joan Bergman calls the money shot. This is what the producers want to see where the investment went in the costumes. Costumes are usually held in the movie makers keep them afterwards. But Joan Bergen is in the unique position where she could purchase the items. She purchased about 50 costumes and she said she couldn't bear to part with them. Braveheart, starring and directed by Meg Gibson, was filmed in Ireland. And at the time of production, in 1995, was the most expensive film made here. This was a result of negotiations between the star Mel Gibson and our then Minister for the Arts, Michael D. Higgins. Braveheart established Ireland as a major industry in the film business. Braveheart went on to be nominated for 10 Oscars, winning five of them, one for Best Picture. It established Ireland on the tourist map and has been a great source of industry since. in Neil Jordan's Breakfast on Pluto is a transvestite growing up in Catholic Ireland in the 60s and the 70s. The story is of a boy trapped in a world he wants desperately to escape from and to reinvent himself. When the costume designer Eimear Eimear Neimear Downing saw this in a shop on sale in Rome in the height of summer she thought it would be perfect for the central character Killian Murphy. Killian's slight frame was perfect for this jacket and she had to have it. She got the trousers specially made to match it. This costume worn by Daniel Day Lewis in the name of the father gives an insight into the freedom and the flamboyance that came when they were released from prison. Joan Bergen blew the budget on this Afghan coat. She got the leather imported from Afghanistan and got it made specially. There was two of them made. She felt it was well worth it. The tie-dye tie t-shirt and the flares worn by Daniel, Lewis's, Daniel Day Lewis were worn with painted shoes and the costume all came together to suit the period of the time. This jacket was worn by Broda Gallagher in The Commitments. When she attended the audition, she wore it. And the, the producers asked her would she remain and would it be part of the costume. Her mother did the embellishments on it. She wore these red, thick crepe soles known as Bubblicious shoes, and they were her own. And when the film was made, she, she kept them, and so she has lent them for this exhibition. provides a trip to Irish cultural history. The green coat worn by Kelly Riley and the imposing cassock worn by Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson felt it was like putting on a uniform. It was like a warrior suit. It kind of protected him and it made him feel that he had to portray the truth. This costume was worn by Liam Neeson in the film Michael Collins. It was directed by Neil Jordan. Sandy Powell, the, create, the costume designer, went to a huge amount of research to get the detail just right. The insignias, the leather work, 
the stitching on the breeches, are all accurate. And it took a great amount of research to produce this wonderful costume. our tour of the Hunt Museum, the costume goes to with these costumes here, designed by Ina Rhea Downing for the movie Love and Friendship, starring Chloe Savingi and Kate Beckinsdale. The costumes portray a society of ladies of leisure. The dresses were built for drama and fun and added to the performance. The door would open and she would swoosh into the room. This huge, lavish ruby dress, and likewise the gold and bronze one worn by Chloe Savingi, were, were strong on textures for society city living. Kate Fleck's character goes from wearing black in the beginning of the movie and ends up with this elaborate, lush ruby dress. accompany me on this tour of the Hunt Museum Best Costume Goes To and for more information please visit huntmuseum.com. <laughs>